guys, it's Ro. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk to you about what you can wear to prison visit. So if you're interested in what you can wear, what I can wear, or if you want to hear some crazy story times about how I almost got in a fight with a girl because of what she was wearing in the processing room before I went in to visit, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families. I also wrote a book called The Comeback Code. I will put it up there. It is for prison wives and family members and actually anybody who wants to focus on self-confidence and goal setting. I got you because it is all the tools and exercises that I've used throughout my years as a prison wife. There's nothing to glorify or glamorize about prison life or being a prison wife. Frankly, it sucks. We are here to make the best of it. We are here to break stigma, beat statistics, and hopefully live happily ever after. I was asked after saying that in a few videos to put that in a disclaimer in the intro of all my videos. So there it is. So make sure you subscribe and also hit that like button if you like this content. My experience is with visiting federal prisons. So I will tell you from my experience, but also just a disclaimer, know that every place you visit is going to be different, every facility. And also the rules are supposed to be flush all across the board, the same at every federal facility, but it doesn't work out like that. It doesn't work out like that because every facility is going to interpret the rules differently, but also every cop every CO in feds, we say cops, every correctional officer in each facility will interpret the rules differently. So I can go to visit on Saturday, have one correctional officer process me through. I'll be fine with that outfit. The following day I could go, let's just say wearing the exact same outfit and I won't be able to get in because it's a different CO. And they say that what I'm wearing is against guidelines because of the way that the guidelines are kind of open to interpretation. For example, clothing being too tight. What's too tight to me might be very different than what's too tight to you. Some just don't really care. Like I've seen people get in and stuff that is blatantly across the board, not allowed. And it is what it is. As a visitor, I am not gonna complain. I'll tell you guys a story really quick. Tight clothes is one of them. So this woman came in to visit one time and she was wearing very pale pink skinny jeans. They were probably three sizes too small for her. They were extremely tight. You could see things that if I had a daughter, I'd be very upset if she tried to wear these pants. They were just very inappropriate for everyday life, for the gym, let alone prison visit. They just weren't flattering. She tried to get processed and the correctional officer that processed her in said, you're not allowed to wear those pants. They're too tight. So she said, oh yeah. She opened the door to where all of the rest of the visitors were being processed, probably about 15 women. And she said, are her pants too tight? Are her pants too tight? How about her pants? Are they too tight? So in jeans that normally we'd be able to get in wearing, we weren't allowed to wear that day because of that woman. First of all, that's not cool. That is so uncool. Second of all, you're doing what's called dry snitching, meaning you're telling on somebody without telling on them. And that could get you in trouble. That could get your guy in trouble in the back. Because imagine if my guy was one of those that flew off the handle, which thank God he's not. But let's say there was some head of some inside organization. You guys know what I'm talking about. His wife was out there. She couldn't get in that day because she didn't bring backup. She tells her husband, so-and-so pointed out my pants that I've worn to visit every single time I've come here for the last year and I couldn't get in, you're gonna cause trouble between that guy, that leader of his organization potentially, and every other guy in there because if he's immature and he's just looking for a reason to fight. You know what I'm gonna do? Let's pull up the rules for the facility where I go to visit and we could talk through them. You could see what works, what doesn't work. You could see the rules that they follow, that they don't, and I'm never gonna be able to go to visit again after these videos, but that's a story for another time. Visiting regulations at FCI McKean. This is a summary from Prison Pro. Visiting hours at McKean Federal Correctional Institution for the FCI and for the camp. Thank you, Prison Pro, but let's go with the BOP's official website. We're dealing with the federal system. However, every DOC, which is Department of Corrections, so that would be state facilities, and the BOP, which is the Bureau of Prisons, has visiting guidelines online that should be made available to the public on 
each of their websites. The BOP is one made website and then you can get to the facility through, you can search for the location for the facility and the DOC websites, it should be available for each state. So I'm just clicking on visitor information, visiting regulations, and then it says official policy at FCI McKean is that outlines the specific regulations and procedures for visiting an inmate at this facility. <laughs> this might have to be a video all about visits, but it says the purpose and scope. The FCI and satellite camp prison encourages wholesome and meaningful visits with relatives, friends, and community groups in order to maintain the morale of inmates and to develop closer relationships between inmates and family members or others in the community while at the same time maintaining the security and welfare of the institution. So we have hours. I'm not going to go through all this with you. Restrictions for overcrowding, number of visitors, attorney visits, which are no such thing anymore, identification, approved, preparation of the list of visitors. Okay, we just wanna know about apparel. Visits not in Gen Pop. Okay. Oh, introduction of contraband. Ooh, visitor conduct. Okay, I think it's visitor conduct, right? Yes, the dress code is as follows. The dress code is as follows. No pants with holes, spandex, or tight fitting. Example, yoga pants, leggings, and jeggings. So you're not allowed to wear any type of sports attire, like these leggings that I'm wearing right now. Once again, she's doing yoga pose. Would never get in. Have I seen people get in in them? I plead the fifth. Have I ever gotten in in them? No. However, years past, I remember this is a specific outfit I wore. I don't think we took pictures that day or I'd show you. I wore an oversized button down white shirt with a teal scarf, black leggings and flip flops. Very casual summer outfit. And I got in just fine. In the beginning when I started visiting there, it was you could wear leggings if you had a shirt that was long enough to cover your Lady parts, no more, not anymore. No midriff tops, strapless garments, garments which expose private parts of the body or see-through clothing. Actually, where I go, they take this one step further. You're not allowed to have a shirt with no sleeves on it. You have to have sleeves on your shirt. You know those cold shoulder tops that had a cutout here? That was up to the discretion of each officer, but thankfully I've been able to wear them. I've worn a few different of those and I've seen a few people with a few different of those. However, you could wear cold shoulder, as long as it had a neckline that was high enough and sleeves, you could not wear an off the shoulder like this. They're not gonna let you in in that. If your shirt, let's say, falls off your shoulder when you're there, you'll probably get spoken to to lift it up. No military clothing, such as camouflage, field jackets, khaki fatigues, or BTUs. What's BTUs? Put, me, put it in the comments. But you're not allowed to wear the color khaki because the inmates wear the color khaki in the feds. They don't anymore actually because now they wear jumpsuits where I am, but story for a different time. You're not allowed to do that for two reasons, supposedly. First of all, because they want to be able to differentiate who the inmates are and who the visitors are just in case something happens. Second of all, they say, so you can't switch clothing with them and help them escape. I'm 5'3", 130 pounds, give or take on a good or a bad day. Adam is 6'4", 220. 215, give or take on a good or a bad day. How is he putting on my khaki pants? How is he putting on my khaki anything? It would be like doll clothes on him, but again, I get it. I understand they want to differentiate between the two or I guess they could technically say like I could slip off my vest and somehow get it to him and they could bring it in the back and make a whole outfit out of it so they can escape as a visitor one day out of the front. It, whatever. The whole point in me telling you that is a lot of times visitors are not going to be allowed to wear the colors that the inmates wear. Like my girlfriend Jo, when she went to go visit Ben, who just came home. I'm so excited for them. You yes. You guys, I'll post a video with Jo up there. I love her. Anyhow, she was never allowed to wear blue to that facility. So a lot of times we would meet up halfway. She was in Maryland at the time before she moved down south. I was in Jersey, so we'd each drive two hours. We'd meet and go to the mall and we would shop for her visit outfits. And it was really hard to find outfits that didn't have blue because jeans 
are blue. So she would wear white jeans, she would wear black jeans, she would wear maxi skirts. The visiting rules were a little bit less strict there, but with the colors they were. So just remember the color that the inmates wear and you're probably not allowed to wear that. The next, it says no shorts are considered appropriate apparel and will not be authorized. There was a while where Bermuda shorts that went to the knee or capri pants, not ankle length pants, not three quarter pants, but the capri pants, I think they were called pedal pushers back in the day that go right below the knee. Some cops were allowing them, some weren't. One of my girlfriends was allowed to wear a denim short right below her knee or right, right at her knee, I believe. That was such an adorable outfit. She could wear that. So it just depends on, again, the discretion of the cops. There was one time I saw a little kid, probably two or three years old, that was not allowed to wear little baby shorts. They weren't Daisy Dukes by any means. They were just shorts that little kids wear, you know. And the cop had to make a huge deal out of it. It bothered me so much because they went into this huge thing about there could be people in there with fetishes. So now you're going to scare the visitors that are trying to bring their babies to see their daddies. The end, not going any further. No low cut blouses. This would definitely not get in unless I had a shirt underneath it. I've seen some cleavage. It just depends on the discretion of the cop again. We're luckily, we're allowed to wear a v-neck, we're allowed to wear a scoop neck, as long as the scoop doesn't go too low. I know a lot of places, Arizona is one of them, where you're not allowed to wear anything below your collarbone. Collarbone can't show. Whew, damper for a cute outfit, but JoJo does it. So high necks, crew necks, as long as these bones don't show, you're good. But where I am, it's up to the discretion of the officer. Oh, here it is. No tank top, tube top, strapless, sleeveless, or top shirts or muscle shirts. All shirts and blouses must cover the shoulders, both male and female. I am just so curious where this rule comes from. I get tank tops. I get muscle shirts. You can have some nipples out. Just to me, it's just distasteful. <laughs> Sorry guys that wear the spaghetti strap muscle tank tops. I don't know if anybody except for New Jersey and Venice Beach wear those, but, or you know, like the Borat. <laughs> so not a fan, but I get it. Side boob, cleavage, tank tops, I understand, but I don't understand the no sleeves. If it's appropriate here, it gets hot in the summer. I mean, I'm always freezing in visit. It doesn't matter if it's in July, I could wear a parka and still be cold because you're not moving around, your blood's not circulating, you're in the same spot for six hours. Even when you're at work and you're sitting for eight hours, you're up and down, you leave for lunch, you can come and go as you please, you're in meetings, you're not just confined to a space. You can go outside and get a breath of fresh air. Here, it's a whole bunch of people cooped up in one room just sitting. So I get really, really, really cold and I also get really, really, really cold tired. No profane, sexually explicit, or inappropriate slogans on clothing. Personally, I don't think that's appropriate anywhere, so I agree that it's not appropriate in prison. I totally agree with and believe in self-expression. I just don't understand why people need to have major profanity glaring on their shirts. If I had children, I wouldn't want that them exposed to seeing the F word on your shirt. Just my thing. No flip-flop style open-toed shoes without a strap around the heel. For safety reasons, a strap around the heel must be present. All visitors will wear shoes to include children. That was another one where a baby, an infant who couldn't even walk, I'm talking a few months old, did not have a shoe on and they would not let that family in. And they also said that it could be because of fetishes. What? I don't even think they made shoes that small for that baby. The baby came in wearing socks, wasn't allowed without shoes. Again, story for another day. That was that cop's discretion, blah, blah, blah. When I first started going there, you could wear rubber flip-flops out of the dollar store if you wanted, no problem. Then it turned into, they couldn't be rubber flip-flops out of the dollar store, but it could be normal sandals. Then all of a sudden, I've been going there for 10 years. About two years ago, it started just one weekend. They didn't announce it to anybody, nothing. Everybody showed up for a visit. It was Father's Day weekend. Personally, I think it was probably because of overcrowding. They were trying to get the crowd to go down before they had to terminate people. Kind of like when I used to work the door at a club when I was in college. I was a shot girl and I worked the door. Those are some stories for you guys. Bouncers in the back of the club would radio up to the bouncers that were letting people in and they'd be like, we're at capacity. So when they were at capacity, they would just start telling people, oh, you're not allowed in because you're wearing this. And they would just make it up off of the top of their head. Kind of the same thing. I think that they just look for excuses. So this day they started with no open-toed shoes. Apparently they told the inmates to tell their families. What? 
Nobody ever did or I would have been told, believe me. No open-toed shoes, period, was the rule for a little while. And then people looked at the website. This wasn't on there. This has been updated since and that didn't say that. So then it started this battle back and forth between the region and the facility and then it turned into open-toed shoes had to have a strap on the back. And for the next probably six months throughout that rest of the summer and fall, it was kind of go at your own risk and make sure you have shoes in the car because some cops said absolutely no open toes. Then some would turn around and say your shoes had to have a back. One time I tried to wear slides, a really cute pair of slides. They had a pointy toe. The front was totally closed, but they had no back. And the girl behind me, I could tell she was really nervous and it was a slow processing day. We were trying to get in before count. And she said, excuse me, they're probably not going to let you in wearing those shoes. And I said, I'm just going to go change. She didn't want me to delay her. I get it, girl. I get it. We want every second with our visit. I had plenty of time. I had a pair of boots in the car. I went in, I put on boots, rolled my jeans up on the bottom so I looked cute went in no big deal no watches fitbits or otherwise considered smart accessories will be permitted so i was always allowed to wear a watch there until smart watches became really popular and then people would start trading their watches the inmates watches with smart watches so they could have them in the back and administration caught on to it so they said no watches across the board now here's a question just a really hypothetical question. Do you think Fitbits are really coming in from all of the visitors or do you think that because you know everybody has all this money to bring in spare Fitbits or do you think that they're being brought in other ways? Just curious. But yeah ever since then no watches at all are allowed in. No scarves or gloves. Thankfully where I've gone I've never had a problem having gloves in my pocket because it gets really cold. He's I think an hour and a half from Canada. It is freezing where he is between October and May. So I've never had a problem wearing gloves from the parking lot into the facility, putting them in my jacket pocket, having them search my jacket, search my pockets, search the gloves, putting them back in my pocket. We have to leave the facility to go from the front processing room to the visiting room. So I've put them on then, put them back in my pocket, hung my jacket up because you have to when you go into the visit room and I've never had a problem. I don't know if that's changed. Scarves, I've been allowed to wear them before, not allowed to wear them before, but as of recently, across the board, no scarves because they say people can hide stuff in their scarves and then hand it off during visit. Here's the thing though, you have to take off your scarf, send it through a scanner, you walk through a metal detector, everything is searched and then you put your scarf back on. But what they're saying for you guys that aren't involved in this life is that I could put that package, whatever I'm bringing in, into a body cavity, take it out of my body cavity in the bathroom, put it in my scarf and somehow exchange it that way. Again, the minimal amount that could possibly come through visit and the amount that is spread throughout inside, is it 100% the visitors all the time? Is it majority visitors or majority of different ways? No sunglasses. I have seen people get in with sunglasses on their head. I've also seen people get in with glasses, regular real glasses, prescription glasses that tint. So, but I've never worn it. What's the point? I don't need sunglasses inside a visit. No gray colored sweatpants or sweatshirts because in the back, when you're at visit, you have to wear a certain outfit. You have to wear, it used to be khakis and now they have to wear a jumpsuit. But when they're in the back and it's casual time, then they wear gray sweatpants, white t-shirts, gray outfits, stuff like that. So we're not allowed to have them for the same reason, exchanging clothing. No chewing gum in parentheses. This is hysterical that they have this, including items already in the mouth. It's true though. If you go in through processing, with gum in your mouth, there's a garbage can right next to the metal detector and they'll make you spit out your gum. So no chewing gum, no ball caps, hats, bandanas, sweatbands, do-rags, or any other type of headgear. It's authorized with the exception of approved religious headgear identified as the following. I'm gonna put it all in the comments because I'm gonna say these wrong and I do not mean to be disrespectful to anybody. So we'll put that up there. Visitors will not have to remove their religious headwear and it will not be searched other than through a metal detector. If there is reasonable suspicion that contraband is present, then the policy governing searches of non-inmates will be enacted and adhered to. I have seen a Muslim woman go in with a lot of bobby pins holding up 
her headscarf. I'm sorry, I don't know what it's called and I don't want to say it wrong. And she did have to remove the bobby pins because that was setting off the metal detector. She did not have to remove the headgear itself. She did not have to remove her scarf around her head, but she did have to take off the bobby pins that were holding it in place. It didn't fall off, but skirts and dresses will be permitted however they cannot be form-fitting and they have to cover the knees i've worn dresses there before i've worn dresses to the knee i've worn maxi dresses i've worn middle of the leg dresses t-length dresses and i've been fine i've never tried to wear a short dress because it's not even worth it for me to argue with a cop on the length of my dress plus i'm 5'3 so if i wear a short dress it's short short or it's just, it doesn't look right on me. 5'3 athletic legs, the end. Visitors will not be permitted to wear pants, coats, and or shirt that resembles the khaki colored inmate uniform. Any visitors wearing clothes similarly colored, brown, light brown, beige, khaki, or tan will not be allowed to enter the visiting room. That must be new because for years we could wear, I had a tan sweater that I wore one time and the cop was cool. This is right when they were just starting to enforce this rule and she said, I'm gonna let you in this time, but never wear that sweater again. So you can't wear army green. You can't wear certain other shades of green. You can't wear certain shades of tan, khaki. I've never had a problem with brown as long as it's a darker chocolate brown or darker. Okay, so that's it as far as visit clothing. The only other thing I want to advise you on is anywhere I go, you can't wear a wire in your bra because the wires will set off the metal detector. Everybody that goes into the facility has to wear a bra. Everybody, well, every woman who goes into the facility has to wear a bra. I've seen people take it off, throw it away, and get in just fine, but that's a story for another time. I would be too insecure. However, you have to pass through the metal detector or you're not allowed in the facility. Unless you have a doctor's note and let's say you have a metal rod or something in your back or a plate in your ankle, something like that. If you have a doctor's note, then they will wand you down, you're okay. But if it's just for a bra and they can see where the metal detector on your body, where the metal is that's setting off the metal detector. So I one time almost got into a huge fight with a woman in the processing room because she was wearing wires in her bra and I wound up being wrong. So stay tuned for that story because this video got way longer than I thought it would be. We'll do that on another fun separate video. In the meantime, you guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you and Lord knows I am too. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys.